Hi, welcome back to Classical Coffee. Today we're going to go a little more in depth into the Poulenc uh, Concert Champêtre. And just a little bit, Paul is uh, our guest artist, Paul Cinema, is going to give you a, a sort of a quick tour through the piece. But I just wanted to say uh, that there are striking similarities, as I said yesterday, about all three composers uh, on this program went back to their roots uh, in different ways, but went back to their roots for for um, inspiration. In the particular case of Poulain, um, he uh, grew up in Paris. The early sounds he remembered were the sounds of popular songs in the street, going to music halls and cabarets. And so um, he used this music as a resource for him, for, for his, his compositional style. He felt in general that um, the high German art music of Wagner and Strauss, and even the music of Deb Debussy, which he considered to be too refined and uh, overly fussy, he felt that this wasn't truly really French either. So what he wanted to do was to create a unique French style that reflected the character of the French people. So he used these, these sharp contrast of emotion and uh, his resources and his melodies and his harmonies are drawn straight from popular uh, Parisian music. So uh, now Paul is going to give you a little intro to the piece, a quick spin through Concert Champêtre. This is one of my favorite pieces for harpsichord, and among the concerto repertoire for harpsichord, it, it's got to be my favorite. Um, it points so much to one of the great contrasts in Poulenc's life. An early critic called him a, a half-monk, half-thug. The idea that his music can be very spiritual, but also at times very raucous in body, and this concerto embodies all of that. The first movement begins with a mysterious introduction, and then goes on to a theme which uh, reminds me a little bit of a Mozart rondo in a way. And here I, I have to exploit the two manuals of the harpsichord. He then develops that theme uh, and, and carries us through the piece with this sort of buoyant uh, happiness. Uh, he then moves into some, again, some of his uh, roguish characteristics with a little ragtime. It's a little ragtime syncopation. The work then carries on uh, to a whole different mood. There's so many contrasts and changes and there's all these wonderful melodic tags that, that come out uh, of the work. Uh, he then moves us into uh, something which reminds me of Stravinsky in Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. And he develops that into a little cadenza. And I, I feel that that use of those Stravinsky elements point towards one of the great artistic movements of Poulenc's time, primitivism using these kind of rough rhythms to express himself. The movement, before its final conclusion, moves to a softer section where I employ the buff stop I talked about yesterday. But we don't stay in that mood too long. Finally, we have a recapitulation where our theme comes back. The second movement of the work points more towards the title of the piece, the Country Concerto. And this movement is very much like a bersus or lullaby, he calls it a Sicilian, uh, and has just beautiful melodies throughout it. Finally, the last movement, uh, starts with a almost a frantic interpretation or reinterpretation of Handel's Harmonious Blacksmith, one of the most popular pieces from the 18th century. Poulenc reinterprets this in his own style. And the work gets more and more frantic until we build up into moments of repose, wonderful beauty, and finally a recapitulation of the beginning of the entire work.